Thank you for joining us on Aston Originals today. We're celebrating 100 years of Aston Pharmacy School and I'm joined by three colleagues from the Pharmacy School to hear more about the history and all things research and teaching at the school. Now, um, firstly, can you all uh, introduce yourselves for the show? Um, uh, so I'm Gavin Woodall and I'm a Professor of Neuropharmacology uh, here in the Pharmacy School. I'm Joe Bush and I am Head of Aston Pharmacy School. My name is uh, Afsal Mahmoud. I'm Professor of Pharmaceutics at the School of Pharmacy at Aston. Now, firstly, can you tell us a bit more about how the school started uh, and about its origins, Joe? So there's an argument you can trace our roots back to 1865 with an organisation called the Birmingham Pharmaceutical Institute, which was um, delivering lectures to people already within the profession. Um, after that, the um, big development, I suppose, after that was 1919, when soldiers returning from the First World War were given funding to access training and education uh, in pharmaceutical chemistry at the Birmingham Municipal Technical School, as it was then. And then in 1923, the school appointed its first pharmacist members of staff, and we had a pharmacist section within the Department of Chemistry, as it was at the time. So that's why we're celebrating uh, 100 years involvement in pharmacy education this year. Um, after that, in the 1950s, we, we moved to the Birmingham Central Technical College uh, and then onto this campus in Gloucester Green, where we are now. And then in 1966, the Technical College became Aston University, uh, and we've been here ever since delivering excellent pharmaceutical education. Um, and in 2016, um, which seems a long time ago now, but it was only six years, we, we um, were awarded a Regis Professorship by Her Majesty the Queen uh, in recognition of our exceptionally high quality research. Mm. So that's kind of a, a very brief fly through of the history of the school. It's a very old school. Um... Producer Sam, have we got some photos of some of the our past past students? So yeah, goes way back there to wartime students and the sixties and the seventies. So that's just a little look back and some fantastic hairdos as well. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I mean, you guys have all been here for quite a number of years. Afsal, tell me what attracted you to teaching here and research for that matter. Um, Aston uh, has a very vibrant research culture and a very rich history of teaching pharmacy in the UK. So um, the research culture um, at Aston supports translational research, i.e. research that delivers impact. Not to say that we don't engage in fundamental or basic research, we do. But for me, the key attraction was the translational uh, research and the support within the university to deliver that. Perhaps um, it wouldn't be an exaggeration if I said that the key elements that are needed to take research um, to the general public, to take research from laboratory and deliver its impact, the different elements that are needed are very well presented, very well connected here at Aston. And for me, that was one of the key attractions. And I came here um, because... Aston does everything. So uh, I, I look for targets to make new drugs and, and invent the new drugs. People like Afsal are in, able to formulate them and turn them into tablets and pills and liquids like Alpol that you can put in somebody's mouth and get the drug into their body. And then we've got Joe who's helping to deliver all the pharmacists that we need to prescribe these drugs uh, and to talk to patients about their drugs, review their medications and everything else. So Aston covers the whole picture, really. My answer is a little bit more prosaic, um, to be honest, in that I was here as an undergraduate student. So, I, oh, was, wow, you studied here. Yeah, um, a long time ago now. I don't want to say when. Um, <laughs> so I got captured, really, in in uh, around about the turn of the millennium. Um, and I say that in a positive way. So obviously I found being here as an undergraduate student pretty inspirational. I, I like the staff. I like the way things were done. And um, I kind of wanted to come back and work here. And that's what I did. Did you know back then or did you have any idea back then when you were studying that you might stay on here and become head of the pharmacy school? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all, no. Um, yeah, I came back to do a PhD um, and I had no idea where that would take me, but this is the route I've travelled. I think um, Aston's a uniquely friendly place. I think it's why people stay, isn't it, Joe? I've worked at universities up and down the UK um, over in Canada, in Montreal for, for five or six years. And I've, you know, Big universities and small universities, and uh, Aston's 
smaller as a university, but it's also much more friendly, and we everybody knows each other, and yeah. that makes a big difference. It does. It just we do tend to retain people. I mean, yeah. my, my PhD supervisor was was Chris Langley, who's still here as a deputy dean in the College of Health and Life Sciences now. So, it, mm-hmm. you know, we stick around. I think. A great testament to Aston. That is Absolutely. definitely. Um, now, I mean, such a huge array of, of research that, that, that goes on currently in the department, but historically, you know, we've had some big research discoveries um, and developments um, from brain cancer to diabetes drugs. Can you tell me a bit more about that, Afsel? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, going back to my introduction, um, research is in Aston's DNA. Um, and translation research, more specifically, um, Aston's very well equipped uh, because Aston fully understands how to take research from a laboratory into the clinic, how to make that difference, you know, how to sort of um, take something that uh, researchers, academics in the university create and um, deliver um, impact. So going back to your, your point about uh, timozolomide, um, research, brain cancer research was at its prime um, in the late 70s and early 80s. Um, the research group led by Professor Malcolm Stephen discovered timozolomide, which was the world's first um, anti-cancer drug to treat, to treat brain tumors. That then went on to become the blockbuster drug, um, meaning uh, it reached sales of for a billion uh, dollars, but we didn't stop there. Uh, that sort of theme, that um, continuum, uh, carried on. And in the late eighties and nineties, um, work on metformin, led by Professor Cliff Bailey, um, revolutionised uh, t- treatment of um, diabetes. Uh, metformin is, in fact, one of the largest, uh, in fact, the most prescribed drug to manage diabetes and the mechanistic study, i.e. how it acts, what it does, and how it lowers the blood glucose, all of that was uh, done here at, uh, at Aston. And that work was led by uh, Professor Bailey. Um, we also have um, other key milestone. Um, we, uh, Aston's research has and led to the development of um, uh, ep- drugs to treat epilepsy, ep- uh, epidiolex. Again, Gav's here, and I'm sure he's going to talk, talk more about it. Uh, he was um, the main uh, person uh, who, who was responsible to study the mechanistic side of uh, epidiolex. Most recent, uh, in addition to that, another diabetes drug, uh, dapagliflozin. Um, again, that work was carried out by uh, Professor Cliff Bailey. Yeah. So, you know, if if you if you actually look at um, translational research, research that has benefited uh, for, uh, the general public, we have a rich history dating back to the eight. And those, both of those discoveries that we've talked about um, for diabetes and for brain cancer, um, they happened when research had only really just begun at Aston. Sort of ha- having PhD students coming in, getting funding for research. And to have such a huge or to ha- make such a big achievement, you know, when we'd only really just become research intensive, um, I feel like more people need to know about this, Aston. Mm. I mean, it's it's a fantastic kind of history and I'm sure it's something that you're very proud of. Oh, mm. no, I certainly am as head of school, yeah. I mean, that's part of the reason why we, we get things like a Regis professorship, you know, we, we're the only school of pharmacy in the country to have one. Yeah. And that's in recognition of... The excellent work that my my predecessors have done here. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah, brain so, cancer drug is, is is from the eighties, but it's still actually the best drug for treatment of the really devastating brain cancers that yeah that people have. Yeah, and um, thinking about the you know the the Regis professorship, uh, not many people get that at all, do they? It's uh, it's something that comes from the Queen. Um, we got that in twenty sixteen, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> No, it's um, so we're the only pharmacy school who's got one that they are awarded across all disciplines, but mm. we're the only pharmacy school that's got one. Great stuff, for Aston. Well, thinking about your own research developments, I mean, you're all active in quite different areas of pharmacy, and I think that's really important to to kind of uh, talk about because pharmacy is a very diverse um, area of um, study and and learning. Um, tell us more, Gav, about what you do. Um, so, Aston University's literally across the road from Birmingham Children's Hospital. Uh, and, and in the Children's Hospital, there are lots and lots of kids that have really difficult to treat epilepsies, the kinds of epilepsies that don't respond to, to the drugs that we have available. 
Um, and so my interest is in, is in those children and, and how to treat, really hard to treat epilepsy. What, what new drugs can we come up with? Drugs that have different mechanisms to the, to the ones that, that aren't working. Um, and so uh, I model epilepsy. I study brain cells. I study uh, brain cells from those children uh, as well as in, in, in other ways. Uh, and I look uh, for new targets so that we can design a drug uh, to stop the seizures. Um, and I collaborate with people like Afsal um, to deliver those drugs to the kids in, in, in ways that will uh, enable the drug to reach the right parts of the brain and then to do its job. Uh, and one of the drugs I've been working on is uh, a version of CBD. So everybody's heard about cannabis uh, uh, and CBD especially is, is quite widely known now in the press. Uh, and I work with a drug company to help develop that as a drug to treat the most hard to treat epilepsies. And it's effective now in about half of the children with the most drug resistant epilepsies. So we're really proud of that achievement. Uh, and we also do some mad things as well, me and Afsal. We've invented artificial blood together. Uh, to keep... Artificial blood yeah. as yeah. well. We, we want to keep brain cells alive in the dish <laughs> so that we can do our experiments. And because of Afsal's uh, amazing formulation skills, uh, he's come up with ways to make uh, miniature little spheres that, that look a bit like blood cells, but actually are made of, of drugs and clever things that Afsal does. And we can use that in my lab to keep brain cells alive and, and, and then use those brain cells to... That's incredible. Test. <laughs> yeah. Tell us more about your work. Um, my, my research um, is in a similar domain as um, Gav's, i.e. the commonality is that uh, my interest uh, is formulation development for children. So within that, um, I look at um, dosage forms, i.e. tablets that can be given to children. So more specifically, tablets that disintegrate in the mouth. So they look like your conventional tablets, but as soon as you place them on the tongue, um, the saliva breaks them apart and you can swallow that as a liquid. So that's one area of interest. Now linked with that, um, I also do some work in masking the taste of bitter drugs, you know, as you can appreciate, um, you know, giving medicines to children. And challenge is quite a... <laughs> Mammoth task um, and, and, you know, very challenging and taste is one big factor within that. Okay. So um, that's an area I'm interested in uh, looking at uh, taste masking. And that work actually has um, led to new technology development within uh, our group. And we actually have a spin-out company, Aston Particle Technologies, that is currently um, looking at... Um, Particle engineering, uh, one of the areas of application uh, of that technology is how you uh, can mask the bitter taste uh, of compounds by depositing very fine particles of neutral tasting uh, material over bitter drug molecules. I mean, speaking of, you know, spin out companies and business partnerships, I think that's another area that Aston does really well. At, I mean, particularly with business partnerships, um, working with, with industry to kind of bring the research out there in, into the real world. Um, I know as well as your spin out that you talked about, there's there's a company you work with, Max Bio. Yeah, again, um, translational research, research that is close to market, that is close to impact, uh, is one of the key themes within um, Aston University and especially within the School of Pharmacy. We do a lot of work with pharmaceutical companies, uh, NHS trusts, um, and other regulatory bodies as well. And there, I would say one of the reasons why we do that is the setup and most importantly, the research culture. It's, a, it's within our DNA. We've seen the success with Timazolomon. We've seen the success with uh, Metformin. So that is in our culture. That is um, a part of our research vibrancy. Um, so yes, uh, Max Bio is another company that I'm working with. Uh, we're looking at uh, CBD. In fact, we set out to um, make um, CBD eye drops. Um, what was interesting was CBD has very poor solubility. And in order to overcome the issue of solubility, um, because we were asked to, to deliver them as eye drops, we actually looked at the anatomical makeup, i.e. what are the different layers of a tear film? And that actually inspired us to create a delivery system to formulate CBD, which um, then went on to um, have so many different applications. And that has now extended um, into looking at 
delivering insulin through the buckle route because um, in addition to formulation development, uh, we also look at uh, ways of uh, evaluating how medicines behave, how medicines perform in the human body through uh, lab-based um, setup, lab-based experiments. And we have a working buckle cell model so we are able to test and screen a range of different types of formulations. And the current work with Max Boy is focused on um, delivering insulin through the buckle route. So that's a... Fascinating stuff, yeah. Exciting project for us, yeah. And um, just moving on to you, Joe. I mean, your area of pharmacies around, the, you know, the public health function of pharmacists. And again, um, such an interesting area. Tell us more about that. Well, it's it's not done in a lab. And it's difficult to make it sound as exciting as, as what Gavin... <laughs> but a very important... Doing. No, it, it is. I mean, initially my research was focused around public health specifically. Um, I've moved on since then to do more sort of service evaluation work. But the reason that's important is because pharmacists over the last... getting on towards 40 years now have made this transition away from a, a, a group of people who store drugs and give drugs out towards a clinical profession. So patient facing, delivering clinical services, public health services as part of that as well. Uh, and a lot of what my work looks to do is to assess the effectiveness of those services and the cost effectiveness of those services to provide the evidence base that says that those developments are a good thing. So, you know, are pharmacists getting involved in general practice as one we did recently? Is that a good thing? And, you know, that research suggests that it is. It suggests it can be... Um, both effective in terms of delivering clinical benefits, but also cost effective in terms of saving costs for, for the NHS. So yeah. that's kind of what I'm involved in now. And then there's the whole area of um, pharmacists working in other areas of the community as well, isn't there? Yeah, so still the majority of, of our graduates will go into work in community pharmacy. Yeah. Um, we're seeing policy developments just recently around getting community pharmacists more involved in hands-on clinical work and giving out perhaps antibiotics for relatively simple infections. And I, I don't mean simple as in infections are simple. I mean uncomplicated infections yeah. without any additional conditions involved. So again, there's going to be further work needed to, to, to back that up with data and evidence to show that that is the right thing to do from the NHS perspective, but from a public, public perspective as well. So satisfaction work, cost effectiveness work, um, all the stuff that policy people really like to see. Yeah. We're looking at our students um, today. I mean, Farm Aston Pharmacy School now in 2023, you know, it's changed a lot. We have a four-year MPharm course. Um, talk, just talk us through the types of uh, learning and teaching and the new facilities that, that students have now. Yeah, so um, it's, people always say this in pharmacy and it's uh, become a cliche. It's an exciting time uh, in pharmacy at the moment. We, we've had new standards from our regulator, which means that all pharmacy schools are currently sort of changing their programs to to meet the learning outcomes of the new standards um, and what that means is that there will be a even greater clinical focus in the program than there is perhaps currently um, and that will also involve bringing down prescribing into part of the undergraduate program and at the minute it's the postgraduate speciality so in terms of the MPharm now there will still be the traditional things that students would expect there'll be lectures there'll be tutorials there'll be workshops there'll be laboratory sessions um, there's the stuff we do now around clinical practice. So we, we do clinical work now. We are not, it's not like we're not doing clinical stuff, but as we go forward, what you'll see is, is even more, um, experiential learning. So more practice placements in clinical placements in community pharmacy, in hospital pharmacy, in general practice, uh, even into prisons now as well to give right. people more hands-on experience. So to the amount of experience people get during the four years will be much higher than it is currently. Uh, and like I said, the other big demand will be, be the prescribing element, which necessitates the use of, of uh, innovative teaching environments and skills. So we've invested heavily, and we're talking millions of pounds in clinical simulation facilities. So we have a big laboratory downstairs now with, with high fidelity clinical simulations that involves mannequins. So we can get students to um, provide clinical care to, for, for example, uh, a patient who we are simulating having a heart attack. Yeah. You know, what drugs do we give when, what dose? high pressure to, 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 yeah. to mimic sort of real life. So, you know, that's a high pressure situation. We need students to be able to, to re respond to that according. And I think, um, you know, there's been a huge investment. Millions of pounds um, have gone into these health simulation facilities that we're so fortunate to, to have here at Aston. Um, I think, do, do you think that this is going to really um, inform 
uh, the teaching and learning of our future pharmacists and kind of um, skill them up even further than possibly before. Absolutely. It, it, it will it will make them much more prepared for being hands-on clinical professionals when they, when they graduate. So in, in, in a way, historically, we maybe have to do some of this exercise as a paper exercise, which doesn't mimic real life in any way. It gives them the, the background theoretical knowledge, and now they'll be able to do it as if for real. Mm. And we'll be able to assess them on that basis, you know, competence assessments rather than yeah. a mark out of 100. The simulations are in, incredibly, almost shockingly realistic. Uh, and they'll also, they'll surprise you. So uh, you 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 might be treating a child in the simulation laboratory and it will go into a seizure and then you need to know what to do, uh, you know, immediately. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's a really, the future is uh, it's really exciting. Must be exciting for you guys uh, teaching within those facilities. Mm, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and it's uh, the the pharmacists learn alongside the medical doctors, uh, alongside the nurses. You know, so it's it's a kind of interprofessional relationship that goes on as well, which is really great because they're all going to work together in in the future when they qualify. And the school over the last uh, hundred years have churned out thousands of graduates. We have many Aston Pharmacy alumni. Just briefly, you know, what have some of these people gone on to do? Well, we've got graduates in uh, in research. We've got graduates running big pharma companies in the US and the UK. Uh, and of course, we've got graduates who've gone out there to work in, in hospitals and community pharmacists and, and, you know, all around the West Midlands and then and, and north and south <laughs> around the country. Yep. So, so you know, we've got senior people working in senior positions within the NHS in the hospital sector in primary care general practice we've got people working in senior positions in community pharmacy people who've gone on to start their own businesses and uh, and made successes of it um more recently we're seeing the drive pharmacists are moving some, somewhat out of the traditional domains if you like and, and doing other stuff that might not be pharmacy specific so moving into other healthcare sectors um, into academic writing, some of them. So, you know, I mean, I think the message I would say is pharmacy now is not just a degree that will lead you on automatically to be a pharmacist. Some people want to step outside of that and do other things. We'll become head of Aston Pharmacy School. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, just to conclude, I want to know what makes Aston Pharmacy School so special and unique to you and why are you proud of, of it and of working here? Um. I think it's because we cover the whole ecosystem uh, from the inventing the drugs in the first place to uh, making sure that they can be delivered safely and effectively to the patients uh, and then covering, you know, the whole of that public policy, uh, influencing government decisions and the whole ecosystem around drugs and, and what we can do for people. And that makes Aston, you know, a really special place to work because we've got people in all of those different domains. And, and and just to add to that, um, and also the support mechanisms to enable that as well. You know, I think the university fully appreciates um, not just their challenges, but also their opportunities in terms of actually taking risks. To risk into uh, what I mean by that is to actually consider translating laboratory research into practice yeah. um, and not many universities are equipped to do that and we have clear guidelines clear policy and most importantly that culture and support mechanism within an Aston um, and I believe that's fairly unique to Aston. I mean I, I must love it right because I've, I've been here pretty much full time on and off a little bit since the late 1990s so so I must love it. I mean I think uh, I mean, people say about it, uh, the university in general, that, that there's a real strong community here, and, and there is. And I think in the pharmacy school, that's exactly the same. We've got a great community, and I don't just mean students or staff. I mean together as a whole. Yeah. Um, I've got some great colleagues who I have the pleasure of working with every day. Um, it's just, it's, I wouldn't want to work anywhere else. It's a great place to be. Well, on that note, I'm wishing Aston Pharmacy School a big 100-year happy anniversary. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you all for joining us uh, today on Aston Originals. You can find out more about pharmacy at Aston on our website and Twitter at Aston underscore pharmacy.